Welcome to the Siemens Control Panel Online Symposium and we will be presenting Realize Your Semi-Automated Workflow today. My name is Sean Mulherin. I am part of the product management team at ePlan and I'm responsible for ePlan Pre-Planning, ePlan Fluid and ePlan Electric V8. I will give you an overview of what does it mean to optimize your engineering why is digital transformation so important? And how is data transfer from the various different aspects of your engineering process? Why is it so important? From engineering all the way to sourcing, manufacturing, and operation. Having a good databases, having your engineering digitalized is an important aspect. Who is ePlan? ePlan is part of the Friedhelm Low Group. The Friedhelm Low Group consists of five different companies, Ripple, and CDL, Age, and Stalo. So various different companies. The biggest company in here is probably Ripple, as you all know, the Ripple enclosures. And anything that goes in those enclosures needs to be designed and engineered. ePlan has the solutions to help you do that as quickly and efficiently as possible. Efficient engineering is when change becomes a chance. Well, the only constant today is change. We have to adapt to the market conditions. We have to adapt to our competition. And also we have to look at our own processes internally and make sure that we are using the best possible tools and also the smoothest processes to make sure that the quality of our product stays high and we are competitive in the market. So looking at the way that we do engineering today is an important aspect where in this case, if you are able to change and to optimize, then it is a chance to actually grow and to keep your business competitive because competition is not sleeping and they are also changing. ePlan has about, 40, about more than 51,000 customers worldwide and we're located in 50 different countries. The software itself is available in 19 different languages. So that's talking about the user interface. So whether you're in Brazil, whether you're in the US, whether you're in Japan, in Germany, in France, you can use ePlan. We have support, we have sales offices and trainings offices so that you can hit the ground running with your ePlan solutions. Digital transformations, what does that mean? First of all, it's taking existing processes today and making them digital so that you can use computers and computer technology to already preview the results before these results are manufactured instead of making mistakes during the manufacturing process. 70% of digital transformations fail. Why? Because they haven't been guided properly. They're using the wrong tools. They're using the wrong knowledge or it's out of date. And at the end of the day, it doesn't fit their processes and it fails. So this, these are the areas that we are well aware of and we are providing new ways and better ways to become digital. 64% of CIO expect their role to evolve into change leaders. Identifying new technology, identifying new possibilities and optimizing processes is a huge responsibility of CIOs. And that's going to continue growing in the future. 400 billion will be spent on software in 2019. Software becomes more and more important because data, data is the real fuel inside of a company and you need the right tools and you need the right systems to be able to manage that data, handle that data, create the data and use the data. So the data is an important aspect. Digital transformation risk is number one concern of leaders. Yes, because again, so many companies have already failed. So there has been up until now bad implementations, bad software resulting in data losses, and it actually puts a bad taste in you, the transformation, digital transformation of the company's environment. Why do some succeed, succeed and others fail? So the digital technology provides possibility for efficiency, possibility for uh, gains. However, you have to have the right mindset and you have to be prepared to change because you can't keep on doing the same thing 
and just say, oh, I'm going to become digital now and keep on doing the same thing. It doesn't work. You have to adapt your processes to adopt new technology. So that requires change. So change is an important aspect. And if you're not willing to change, then unfortunately a digital transformation is just going to become a digitization of your system, meaning you're just going to see a pretty picture on a computer, but you're not going to leverage the data behind it to be able to optimize those processes. So first of all, figure out your business strategy before you invest and understand where you want to go. Leverage insiders and recognize their fear of job loss. One of the biggest challenges today is people that are currently working on those processes, working in those environments, they would have to learn new software, learn new tools, and they are going to be fearful of loss of position because suddenly they're not mastering their existing environment, they have to learn a new environment, and that levels the paying ground. However, it's also an opportunity for the users to become more important for the company, more involved in the company's business and processes using new technology. So fostering a startup culture is very important, kind of like, let's try this new software, implement it, let's get going, let's automate, and let's try and make these processes that we currently have more efficient or as efficient as possible. And focus on customer experience. At the end of the day, customer is king, and he has to be able to use your software, understand your tools, understand your processes, and also benefit from the quality of the products that you're going to provide by using new technology. The integrated value chain. You might have heard that term, and this is a term that was coined within Rital as well as ePlan, because what we want to do is we want to provide value all along your engineering process, from design and engineering all the way down to manufacturing and building the enclosure all the way down to making sure that your control system not only is designed properly, but is also housed properly, it's also cooled properly, and make sure that it's going to run and operate it correctly. So at the beginning, you start off with the ePlan solutions for designing your system. Design automation, report generation, data integration, all of those topics are part of the engineering aspect, meaning that you design your control system, capture all of your actuators, your sensors, you do all the wiring, you lay it out, you have pro panel to design your cabinet. And now what you need to do is build that cabinet. You need to drill all the holes on the back plate, you need to do the cutouts on the doors, so you're going to start using the automation systems from Rital, like the Perforex, to be able to automate those processes instead of manually drilling, cutting, and laying out all of those cutouts. Then you have also the enclosures from Rital, which provide you advanced technology such as modular aspects. You also have the climate control systems from Rital that help you to cool the cabinets in a more efficient way. So making sure that the components inside the cabinets don't overheat and your machines don't fail. And then at the end of the day, you also have, from a Rital perspective, the servicing aspects, supplying parts and delivery to make sure that if any requirements are there, the parts are there as soon as possible. So the integrated value chain really provides you a complete workflow from design all the way to manufacturing in an efficient manner. The journey starts here, where in engineering. So engineering needs data consistency. If you look at today's landscape, you have multiple different software tools, you have multiple different databases, the data is in different format. It constantly has to be readjusted, re-entered, retyped in, imported, exported. All of those different tasks are done daily and multiple times a day. So the ePlan solutions want to provide you a consistent interdisciplinary engineering approach to your design. Start off with the mechanical engineering. There you'll find tools such as CATIA, NX, Inventor, SolidWorks, all, in, all of those 3D modeling tools that help you to design your machine from a mechanical perspective. Then you need to design all the control system. The control system for that machine can be designed using the ePlan platform. And there you will capture all of the data of your control system, from motors, to sensors, to cables, to terminals, to plugs, to control cabinets, to protection devices, 
everything concerning your control system will be captured in a digital way inside the platform, creating the digital twin of your control system. Then we start with ePlan pre-planning. ePlan pre-planning is the tool that allows you to upfront create various different concepts or documentation such as PFDs and the process engineering for process flow diagrams. You can do PNIDs for process and instrumentation diagrams. If you have some building automation topics such as air, um, air handling units or air conditioning units, you can design those in building automation with pre-planning. Machine and system layouts, and this is also the example that I'll show you later on in the software presentation regarding e-plan pre-planning. If you have switch gear requirements, you can put elevation drawings in pre-planning and start building, configuring your buckets that go in there and easily create your designs. And finally, you can import external data through a very elaborate Excel interface. Then we have ePlan Fluid. ePlan Fluid supports four different topics, pneumatics, hydraulics, cooling, and lubrication. So if you have any type of automation using these different trades, you can use ePlan Fluid to lay out all of your designs. You can support the ISO 1219 standard regarding symbology, so all of the symbols are standardized and available in ePlan Fluid, and you can lay out all of your pneumatic circuits, for example, for your automation system. Then ePlan Electric V8 is the tool of choice for your schematic diagram creation, so you can generate or create all of your power distribution circuits, your control circuits, safety circuits, PLC I.O. layout, and all of your wiring diagrams needed for your control system. Then we have ePlan Pro Panel. That is a 3D tool that allows you to design your enclosure in 3D, but it's not a modeling software. Modeling softwares are in the mechanical engineering. We are there to provide an electrical engineer a 3D tool so he can easily assemble his cabinets. He can put his DIN rails, his wire ducts. He can simply snap all the components that he's laid out in pre-planning fluid and V8. He can simply, via drag and drop, lay them out in an enclosure, making sure everything fits and making sure you can take advantage of that information. So you can do drilling layouts, wire length calculation, thermal calculation, generate all the production data needed to build those enclosures. So it's the digital twin of your control panel in 3D. Then we have automated engineering. All of these tools are iterative tools where you can interact with the tools to create documentation and data. However, automated engineering allows you to even further automate your engineering process by creating configurators and selecting the options you need, clicking on a button, and all of the data is auto-created by this automated engineering. So now your engineering design process is reduced tremendously by using configurators or generators to automate your design. And finally, ePlan Harness Pro D is the tool to lay out or create all of your harnesses. If you have a product where you have to fit wiring in very tight spaces, whether it's a special vehicle or any type of special applications that you have to build thousands of times, you probably want to create a harness. And harness will combine the 3D model from your mechanical engineering, the circuit diagram from ePlan Electric V8, and will allow you to route and generate your harness in 3D in the most easy possible way. So it'll make sure that your bending radiuses are validated. It can help you design your harness and, of course, create all the production data for harness manufacturing. And finally, we've got software engineering. So whether you're using the Siemens TIA portal or you're using any other PLC, we can export the data from the digital twin of your control systems in the ePlan platform, you can export it to your software programming platform. So that way you don't have to do a manual takeoff of your IOs and function types. Then above all of that, we have the cloud. ePulse is the ePlan ecosystem in the cloud. And these, this ecosystem will have various different tools and options for users to leverage the benefit of the cloud to add even more value to the engineering. One of those aspects is the ePlan data portal. 
with over 265 manufacturers, over 873,000 data sets. I think now we're close to a million, I think with 900 plus data sets. We have also over 200 and close to 300 manufacturers now constantly involving, but it provides you with direct access to parts instead of having to go to the website and search for those components. And Siemens is a very big partner in that aspect and provides also a lot of data to the users so they can design their schematics using Siemens data more efficiently. ePlan eView is our cloud-based viewer application, meaning that all the data created here in the platform on-premise can be uploaded to the cloud. And now not just the engineers can view that data, but also all the downstream production engineers can have access to the data. No matter where they're located, they simply log into the cloud, open up eView, access the project, and can visualize the data that they need to troubleshoot, service, maintain, or even build the equipment as needed. And finally, of course, we want to integrate our solutions into existing business processes. Again, one of the biggest challenges in digital transformation is making everything talk to each other. And a big part of businesses are ERP and PDM systems. And we want to be part of that landscape. So we have various different interfaces, whether it's SAP to Team Center to Windshield, Vault, Tinovia. We have various different integrations to PDM, PLM systems as well as ERP systems for auto, uh, for data exchange between platform and the business system. So that kind of gives you an overview of where do we fit in the entire engineering process. So we are sandwiched right between mechanical engineering and software engineering. And other than that, we provide all the solutions and we carry the data to make it as efficient as possible to design control systems for any given machine. If we look at the aspect of control panel manufacturing, there are various different concerns that are currently with the panel manufacturing. First of all, increasing price pressure. We're trying to squeeze more and more cents now out of the dollar to try and maximize uh, profitability or be able to stay competitive in a market where price pressure is increasing. Shortage of skilled labor. Because the economy is doing so good, all of the good quality skilled people are not available. So it's tough to find skilled labor to actually wire panels and to do all of your wire production or your panel production. There's a pressure to shorten the delivery times. People want their items a lot faster. They, don't, they can't wait six to eight months anymore. They want it in one to two months. So you have to adapt, you have to adjust, you have to change to be able to support those types of delivery demands. And finally, a lot of inefficient workflows and quality issues are still out there and need to be addressed so that at the end of the day, you can build the best possible cabinet and make sure that you stay competitive and can keep your customers. So productivity and efficiency are really key elements for success panel building. If we look at the current state of panel engineering, so there are way too many manual steps today in panel build. First of all, it's all about engineering to order. Every time you get an order, what you do is, oh, let's go and figure out which project we already did like that. Let's try and modify it. So we're going to look at existing engineering documentation. We have to modify it. And of course, if there are errors in the Original project, the errors are carried over, so we kind of repeat the same mistakes over and over again, and we spend more time fixing mistakes than we actually figure out how to make our products better and more and more reliable and high quality. Long time quoting cycles it results for backlog in engineering, so it takes a while to figure out, okay, how am I going to quote this? What's the time? We're never quite sure where the information is, and it takes a while to do that. And finally, revise, documentation, revision management, all, where is all of the associated documents and the revised data? What is the latest revision of that particular project that makes it challenging to actually engineer to order? Order to remittance, manage data between design, purchasing, and manufacturing is very intensive and error prone. Because there are so many different software solutions and the data is available in many different formats, 
trying to synchronize that data along the process is very, very tedious. As build documentation, is the customer receiving the latest version of the panel build documentation? Have there been modifications on the floor that have not been documented? All of these are challenges that the customers have today and that they try have to overcome. And finally, aftermarket support is the information, the detailed information about panels. Is it still available? Can I access it for managing any type of errors that happen? For example, while the machine is running and I have a fault. So the benefits of database-driven engineering is is very uh, very clear an engineering architecture which provides a lot of components for allowing to drive your engineering instead of using your engineering to drive the component creation you now use component data to drive your engineering components can be used to develop intelligent schematic macros which can be saved and reused instead of trying to find an old project and copy from that project you're going to talk about what you need on the machine, what type of functions are there available, and you can use those functions to auto-generate or to quickly create those systems. All component information is stored in one place, which makes it quickly accessible and easily maintainable. Components carry the critical data needed for subsequent manufacturing automation tasks. So the information is there, and you can use it for various different options. And then you also have 2D and 3D data available, electrical functions, prop parts property, mounting, mounting information, and wiring information is readily available in database-driven engineering. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the number of errors that come up at every stage of the engineering. So if you go from basic engineering to detail engineering, there's already an error there's already a challenge here in transferring the data. Then finally, from detail engineering to manufacturing, there's also a transfer of data. And all of that is carries with it costs, the rework costs and the re-engineering costs. So what happens is the further along the engineering process you find errors, the more expensive that error is. So let's have the tool at the beginning that can capture your requirement and your design and minimize the errors right up front. So afterwards, while well, you're going to do the testing, the production, the development, you don't have any errors. All the errors will be found up front, and it's going to minimize the cost. So now you're here, you're in manufacturing. In manufacturing, what you want to do is you want to try and optimize your panel build. So today, building enclosures, you have to do back panel modification. So here we've got the layout. You have to lay out the components on the back plate by hand. You have to mark all the holes by hand. You have to start punching. You have to start drilling, tapping, and cutting out. All of those are manual tasks using, you see the drill here on the right-hand side, or the hammer and the little bit, or some wire processing as well. You have to cut the wires. You have to measure them inside the cabinet. All of those are manual steps that take a long time. Now, you can change that by using a digital twin of your control panel, by doing your wire routing in 3D, identifying the wire lengths, identifying the position of your components in 3D, you can drill your back plate, you can drill your door, you can do all the cutouts automatically. You can also pull all the wires to length automatically, and you can have wire machines such as the wire terminal automatically pull the wire, cut the wires to length. You have tools like the Sikarex, Sikarex that can cut DIN rail or wire duct to length. So based on the length of the wire duct and the DIN rails, you just punch that information in here, it pulls, or you just put your wire duct in there and it'll cut it to length automatically. So Perforex for enclosure and panel modification, and finally the wire terminal for processing wires, which eliminates human error because now you don't have to manually measure or label anything, it's done by the system. So using the ePlan software as the source, using ProPanel as the tool of choice for, this, for laying out your enclosure, you can extract the data to feed these types of machine and optimize your panel build. Here's the Perforex CNC machining center. You have two different machines, just a regular machine, and you have the laser cutter as well. So for different applications, you can use one or the other machines that provide you with benefits in automating the wire, not the wire, sorry, the 
drilling and the cutting of your enclosed surfaces for helping optimize the modifications of mounting pads. For the wire processing, the various different machines, different tools as well available. So the biggest one is the wire terminal. That is an automated machine to pull the wires to length. It can crimp them, it can label them, and that way you don't have to do that manually. But if you want to do it in a semi-automated way, you have also these wires, these machines to automatically crimp, for example, the wires or wires to cut them to a length. So you just put the wire in here, you just type in the length and it'll pull it to the length and cut it. So you have some individual machines that can also help you be a lot more in, uh, efficient in wire processing. Again, the ePlan solutions provide you the design tools from a single source. So we went over those when we looked at the database driven system and these all add values to your engineering process. So at a minimum from a conservative from a conservative perspective, you can reduce engineering time by 50% over traditional other CAD based drafting patterns. So again, you have to be prepared to change and to look at better ways to do it, but these tools can really help you make your engineering a lot more efficient. Let's see how the ePlan platform and its solutions can help the engineering become a lot more efficient by taking data directly from the engineering concept all the way through detail engineering, through panel design and panel built and manufacturing. So let's start off with the machine layout. First, I'd like to be able to view the mechanical layout of my machine and based on that, I would like to identify all of the actuators and sensors associated to that machine. For that, we can insert a graphic. It can be anything from a DXF, DWG file, or even an image file or a self-created graphic. In this case, I'm going to take an image file. We have here the representation of a machine that was sent to me by my mechanical department, and I'm going to use that to insert it here onto this page. We can directly associate this picture to a different layer. It's the layer called wallpaper layer, and that way it will stop the user from moving it by mistake. Here I cannot access that information because it's kind of frozen in the background. Now I'm going to use this layer to kind of identify my actuation report, my actuators and my control systems right here in this layout. On the right-hand side, using pre-planning, I've also captured already certain functional aspects of my machine. And in these functional aspects, I will organize my control system. So to place an actuator, I'm going to use the macro technology in ePlan. And macros can have graphic pictures, graphical images, or can be symbolic representations. In this case, I'm going to have a motor. I'm going to place a motor right here. And this motor is going to be part of my volumetric dozer. I'm going to select that, associate it, and confirm with OK. Now a dialog comes up asking me what size motor should I use for that particular drive. In this case, I'm going to use a two horsepower motor for that system. And I can move on to the next one. Now I'm going to place this one right here. This motor is going to be part of my packaging machine. I'm going to transfer it to it. Again, select the size, this is going to be a 4 horsepower motor. Then I can identify here another actuator that's going to be part of my packaging to group. Select the size, here's a 2 horsepower motor. And in this case down here, or up here, I'm going to do this one. It's going to be part of my bags forming. And this information then is created. So again, I select the size of the motor right here. So I graphically laid out a section or a portion of my control system. The beauty of doing that using pre-planning is the fact that I can structure my information, but I can capture just objects, general objects that are required for my system. And each one of these objects can carry data. Let's take a look, closer look at that. And for example, I looked at the first actuator. I've got a tab actuator. I can add designation descriptions. Here is my technical description. And I can capture information regarding how long is it going to take to plan that motor, how long is it going to take to 
program it, how long is it going to take to, uh, to build it, how much it's going to cost, and how much power consumption I will need. So this information can be used as a quoting input for getting an idea of how much the control system for that particular machine is going to cost. Under my PLC, I can see what inputs, what output requirements I have. In the macro, I can associate a circuit diagram associated to that particular motor. You can see what the diagram is going to look like. And you can add additional information as well if you need to. And this is done right in the concept phase. So without further ado, I can generate right here a report telling me what the system is going to take from a planning perspective as well as from a cost perspective. So here I'm generating a report, putting it on right after my title page. Here I've got a page two, and let's take a look at the results. Here are my four actuators that I have for my different groups. And you can see here already, I've got a total of four digital outputs, 12 digital inputs. I've got four total hours for design, 16 total hours for construction, eight hours for software, total power consumption of 1.6, and a total price of 6,000 euros. So here, these reports can give you a quote estimate or cost estimate for values right up front, simply by creating a graphical layout. So now let's take a look at the controls design. So first, I'm going to need a power supply for my system. So I can just take this one here and I'm just going to replace it with a different one. So use my macro power supply system and then using my X and Y, I can position that macro exactly in the same spot. Here's the power supply for the 24 volt DC system. So it's 120 volts and there we go. Now I'm going to go to my schematics and I could start creating the wiring diagrams for those actuators that I created. However, since I've associated those script circuit diagrams, I can simply drag and drop these diagrams into my schematic environment. Here's the first motor. Let's take the second motor. And I can just go to the next page and take can actually select multiple at once too and then I'm just going to place one after the other and there we go so I've created the schematics now for my power supply for my schematics and as you can see here as well all the cross-reference was updated automatically now what's missing is the device tagging I want to label it according to page and row so I can highlight all of these pages in my drawing and I can do a device numbering and use a NFPA style numbering which uses page and row number to label my devices. All of my devices have been updated and I also want to label all of my wires. So wire numbering and device numbering is automated in ePlan and it's really at the click of a button to create Y numbers and device tags. So if we look at the I.O. aspect of it, you can see that the screw numbers on my I.O. points are 1111 because they're generic. I've got a tag, I've got a descriptor, but I have not associated any of these signals to a particular piece of hardware. In this case, I'd like to take a Siemens rack and populate it with some modules and assign these I.O. to that rack and module. So what better way to lay out your rack and do your rack configuration than the TIA portal? So in the TIA portal, using the TIA selection tool, you can lay out your PLC rack IO and you can create an AML file. What is an AML file? An AML file is an automation ML file, which is a neutral data exchange between PLC software programs and other engineering tools. Here I'm gonna import the data. So I'm importing here from step seven, version 14. You can support also additional different software programming tools, but in this case, I'm gonna use Siemens. Then we have our AML file that was sent to me by the PLC programmer that created a rack layout for me. And I'm gonna simply import that data into ePlan. So let's take a look at PLC. 
Let's take a look at our layout. And here you can see the S7300. I've got my rack. I've got my power supply. I've got my digital I.O. or digital input, digital output parts. So I'm going to go into my PLC I.O. layout. And I'm simply going to drag and drop these two cards in here to give me a PLC overview of my system. These two cards right here. And as you can see, none of the I.O. points of the card have been assigned to the I.O.s in the schematics. So to do that, we're going to stay in the same dialog and we're going to organize our view, filter out all the digital inputs. I'm going to select them. Now I'm going to go to my PLC, assign connection point blockwise. And I'm going to assign all of my digital inputs here to this I.O. card. So here we're going to select these. We can select all of them. And you can see it's going to assign each one of my hardware I.O. points to the I.O. point in the schematic. By confirming with OK, you can see now that the information was correctly transferred. And if I go from here to my schematic, also in the schematic, you can see that the screw numbers were transferred, the rack information, the slot information, and the card information also are now available for all of my inputs. I'm going to do the same thing for my outputs. Let's go back to our layout. Here's our card. I'm going to go to my PLC navigator, filter out all of my digital outputs, select them, and then do an I.O. assignment. Here are all my digital outputs. I'm going to select the card. This one, select all of my these outputs here, confirm, and OK. And now you can see all of the I.O. now have been also assigned. Now that I've done my I.O. assignment from the schematics to my PLC card, I could simply say I would like to now export this particular card. Go to my rack oriented view. I want to export this configuration back to Automation ML so that now the software programmer can import this data and use the descriptors, use the tags, the symbolic addresses to program his PLC without having to do a manual takeoff from the schematics and manually enter all of that data into a software program. So through ML, that is done automatically and the TIA portal supports Automation ML to easily import the data from engineering tools. So we've done our schematics. We've done our I.O. layouts, our I.O. assignment. We've got an overview of our machine. What's next? I need to put all of these electrical control components into an enclosure. So for that, we are going to create a new enclosure. I'm going to open up my layout space, currently blank. I'm going to insert an enclosure. And since ePlan is part of the Freedom No Group, which also is part or which also incorporates Rital, we're going to use a Rital enclosure. But of course, if you have any other enclosures from other companies such as Hoffman and Saginaw, we can use those enclosures in ProPanel as well. I'm going to simply drop this enclosure in here. And let's take a look at the backplate. So I'm going to look at the front of the backplate, and now I can start laying out my components. So first off, I'm going to insert a wire duct. I'm going to select a part number. That part number is going to give me the dimensions of that duct. And now I can easily lay it out vertically. You've got snapping options so that you can easily snap the duct to existing points. And now I can also right click adopt length. So click on this. And then if I right click, I can say place centered, like this one, and it automatically places it. 
I'm going to insert my mounting rail. So this is a bin rail. And again, right click, I can drop the length of the wire duct. So it's the same length. And then I can right click and I can place it centered between two ducts. Same thing again for this one, the drop length. Right click, I'm going to place it centered. And there we go. As you can see right away, each duct and each DIN rail has these red dots. What happens is by simply laying out these components on the back plate, you are also capturing all the drilling information needed for any machine to auto drill this particular back plate. So this is a view, you got the drilling view. So if I take it off, you don't see any of the holes, but if you go to view and show the drilling view, it'll identify those holes. So each one of these holes can be exported to a wire or to a backplate drilling machine and all of these holes can be automatically drilled without human intervention. You just lock in the backplate and the system will drill the backplate according to the size holes that it needs. Now we can use this layout to start placing our components. So if I go to my 3D panel layout, let's look for our main circuit breaker or our main switch. Can just drag and drop this switch over here. There's the first one. Then I've got my motor overloads. These are for the motors that I've selected. I'm just going to drag them in here. Then I'm going to select my contactors. Select my contactors. This one here. So you can see that it's really the 3D tool is not a 3D modeling tool. It's more of a 3D assembly tool where you take existing blocks and you can simply snap them on a DIN rail, you can put them on a back plate, you can easily lay out your cabinet, which is what typical electrical engineers need to to lay out their panels and make sure everything fits and everything is also properly sized. So here I'm going to take this terminal strip asking me if I want to place the entire terminal strip, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to place all of these. And then if I take this one, yep, I'm going to place all of these. And we've got, I think, one more. Two more. These are terminal strips, so you don't have to place individual terminals. You can simply lay out your terminal strip as one. One thing you'll notice here is if you have a 3D model, then the system will actually show you the 3D model representation. If you don't, it'll just use an XYZ, which will give you at least a space requirement for that particular terminal. So it makes it nice because it shows you the place requirement that is needed for that particular now that I've placed my components, let's go ahead and use the information from the schematics to auto, write, to auto route all of the wires and do length calculations for these wires in the panel. So now you can see the wires have been routed. And each wire, if I then select a specific wire, I can look at the properties and it will actually give me a length. So now I know the length of the wire. And because this is done in 3D and I've got all of this information, I can now export this information for manufacturing purposes. So under utilities, under manufacturing data, I could export this to, for example, a Perforex machine to do all of the drilling or to an NC DXF. I had a machine that could read in the DXF system, or I could export it to a Steinhauer machine. And these machines would auto drill the back plate. Then, since I calculated the length of the wires, I could go to wire fabrication, select my COMAX, and now I would export all the wire information to that COMAX machine, and that could simply pull the wires automatically to length. We also have now through Rital the wire, uh, the wire terminal that allows do the same thing, which means pulling the wires, cutting them to length, labeling them, and making them available. So there we go. It simplifies also the entire manufacturing aspect 
of control cabinets. Now, if we wanted to add the 2D documentation for a specific cabinet, we don't have to recreate it. All we have to do is insert model views. So these are 2D views from our 3D cabinet. In this case, I want to see the backplate. So I'm going to simply highlight the control panel, which item would I like to insert. I can navigate here to the mounting panel. I want a viewpoint from the front, hidden lines, confirm, and there it is. And now I can actually add another view, insert model view, and I'd like to see the three-dimensional view of the cabinet. So CP1, I want this, SE isometric, I want it to be shaded, and then automatic scale, and there is the representation of the cabinet. So now you can place as many 2D views as you want on a cabinet from the side, from the top. You can dimension them, you can auto label them, auto dimension them if you need to, and you have your complete documentation for your cabinet. And of course, send the information out to manufacturing tools to automatically drill and cut the wires to length so it makes the panel manufacturing a lot faster. So this concludes the presentation. So I hope I was able to kind of give you an overview how the ePlan solutions can help you to optimize and make your engineering process and your manufacturing process a lot more efficient. From capturing all of your actuators and sensors right up front in the concept phase of the machine, using pre-planning, and then using your PLC or your schematic tool, P8, to lay out all of the wiring diagrams, using Automation ML to exchanged PLC data between the schematics and the PLC programming environment and then finally creating your enclosure in 3D and calculating the wire lengths or the drilling patterns, anything that needs to be drilled and then optimizing that way. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat and we'll take a look right now and we'll answer those questions. Again, from my side, I'm a parent.